Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show, we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter, at Schnell Investor. And you can also find my blogs at gregschnell.com, as well as stockcharts.com. So the main problem with the bull market, it is uphill all the way, and we're really working hard to try and overcome the uh, downward pressure that we've been having over the last two weeks. Uh, today, I want to cover shopping for leadership and looking for opportunities out there. Uh, first of all, is uh, there's an expression called a follow-through day, and what the follow-through day is, is from once you have a low in place, so let's assume Friday was a low, um, once you have your low in place, then you want to start counting out of there. And it usually takes roughly a week for this follow through to show up, but it, it would be a big move up roughly 2% or more later on. And that was through William O'Neill uh, came up with that concept. But what we want to look for is leadership across the space and see what's changing. And um, healthcare is one of the big ones that's soaring on the back today. So we're going to go through and, and check through charts and, and use the homepage again to, uh, to try and find some, some nice setups. So first of all, uh, this is just, let's just keep hitting these updates here. So what's performing the best? So, so far, healthcare and semiconductors are performing the best. So that's pretty good. A little concerned that these three defensive sectors are also performing so well. Um, just want to keep watching to see what order, order things get sorted out at. You can see financials are not exactly rallying here. The market's up 1% and they're up half a percent, so they're underperforming again. Um, when we go into the actual gallery view, what we want to check here, let's just update that. What we want to check and just see is from this big move down, can we start to rally out of this hole? And obviously, we had the 2,000-point rally on the Dow, and it was... Uh, 300 points on the S&P 500. Now we've pulled back about half of that. And we're starting to try to, to rally out of the hole. This is a, a very important inflection point on the chart. And what we want to see here, you can see this uh, momentum curve coming up and trying to reset at zero, and hopefully it can accelerate up. When we go to the daily chart, what we have is a really deep dip here, and now we want to start to see if this can improve. We still have a lot of high volume, and again, we're starting to get bond market signals that are are scaring uh, people. For, so if you're not just looking at the equity market and you're looking across at the bond market, there's a lot of big signals there. So I've been trying to um, put those out to my subscribers and just you know, give a whole state of the nation. I just recorded a big uh, video uh, last night, a monthly conference call, and and working through it. One of the one of the big themes that's coming is the tension that's on a lot of the charts. And uh, what what we really need to see here is this big follow through thrust. So we've got the the S and P trying to hang on to its two hundred day moving average. This is a pretty important place on the chart. When we go up to the Nasdaq. 100. What we see is again trying to rally back through, and we we are we bounced off the 200. Now we're kind of stuck under this 50, and we need to kind of work our way back through that. So as the market just kind of digests what's going on, we'll see if we can get it. The big thing again is that the volume was so significant on Friday, uh, it was you know, a billion shares bigger on the NASDAQ composite than ever before. So that's the kind of thrust that we'd like to see um, mark a bottom. But if we, I'm just going to go get a chart here from the S&P 500. Let me just go grab a new tab. And what I want to show you on the S&P 500, uh, so, so bottoms are marked usually by high volume, but what we have in this particular case just going to grab this and run it out 15 years or 16 years just to give an idea. So what happens when you start to have markets break down? Again, you make bottoms with, with high volume usually. That's, that's what we just had. But when you, and I, I mentioned it was the NASDAQ that had extreme volume, not the S&P. But one of the things to notice here is that the volume, well, it was climbing gently and gently. Then all of a sudden in... In early 2007, you started to see a volume spike. And then July, which marked a pretty major high, 
and then the market pulled back and then it went up to the October high. And what you see is all through here, the volume starting to increase. So we haven't seen that yet, um, but we have had this initial spike. So we don't, we aren't seeing kind of the setup for a major market top coming in here. Now it could be the black swan event that just shows up and all of a sudden uh, takes the market lower. But what we wanna watch for is, is big volume starting to continually increase. So this week again, um, when, we, when we look on the daily basis already, uh, after two days of trading, we're already at the average volume for, for the week. We're up at, well, let's just scroll there. We're up at 8.2 billion and the average is 9.5 and we're you know, early Wednesday morning. So we're on track for pretty much a double this week of the regular volume. So try to keep that in mind is that we're, we're trying to digest this and just see if we can get through. So when I go back to the S&P here, just on this daily chart, so we've had four days now of, of extreme volume. And we, what we wanna watch for is just, can we get enough investors to go back into the market, institutional investors, and really start to, to kind of, uh, hold their positions, not trade so much. So we st should start to see the volume come down. And again, we haven't started to see that yet. So one of the most important things that we want to watch for is the volume start to dissipate and, and get back to a normal level. Okay. Um, when, we, when we're looking through the markets, I, I like to use this members dashboard. I think it's a, an absolutely wonderful tool um, built by the, the good programmers at Stock Charts. And what, what you see here, uh, just different ways to look at the market, but I've got the TSX up here, and obviously I trade the, the Toronto Stock Exchange as well. But when you just look at what is moving up, so I've got the S&P 500 here, you know, Anthem is moving up, Humana is moving up, United Healthcare is moving up. These are all huge moves on the back of some of the, I think on the back of the, uh, uh, Super Tuesday results. So Anthem here has been chopping sideways for a year, hasn't really done anything. Uh, Centene Corp, here's Humana. Um, you know, it had broken out to a new all-time high, dived down to the 40-week moving average and is trying to regain it. As you, as you look through all these charts, I mean, these are big reversals here. And so uh, those major changes are pretty important, but here's Campbell's soup, I mean, what could possibly be more boring than soup, but it's breaking out to a new 52 week high. That says pretty defensive to me. So we still need to keep watching for, um, you know, the defensive names rising to the top and starting to break out. Here's L Brands, and again, it's been beaten down forever here. And so one of the things we'd like to see is this would hold at the 40 week and start to migrate higher. Um, you know, just watching closely to see how all of these different names respond but here's hca healthcare this hasn't done anything for almost two years so you know it's up 10 percent or something today six percent today um i i think what we want to watch for on these charts is um can this healthcare group all start to break out again and if they were all to break out because this one's gone sideways humana's well, it had briefly broken out here, 325 to 375. That's not a bad breakout. I guess it was 350. Um, anyway, it's been trying to get through there. So if all of a sudden it could push to new highs, and the same thing for United Health. Now, if you go back and look at these charts, well, let's just do it this way. Uh, here is um, the the big picture. One of the things that happened back in 2015 was these charts really started to break out and then really haven't done anything for a couple of years now. So if it was their turn to restart this, this move higher, you know, this was a pretty nice chain of events here where it just ran up nice and smoothly for two years. Let's keep watching that to see if that's the next breakout group. Cause if we start to see all of them perform that way, it could be a much better environment. Now, if we go to MRK, um, Merck. So Merck had been on a big uptrend and here recently it's been pulling back. Now the question is, can it start to, to rebound out of here? And again, when we're looking across the healthcare space, of course, there's lots of different ways to look at it. I think one of the most important things to do is to try and find themes because a big part of your investing uh, success will be um, situated in an industry group or a theme that's starting to move. So if it was 
in this case, healthcare, or if it was uh, software as a service, or if it was energy, or if it was, um, you know, when, even when I say energy, all of energy has been moving the same way. So you could say, okay, well, there's no theme there. Oh, well, there's a theme there. It's just, you know, a down theme, not an up theme. So there's still uh, different uh, opportunities out there. And, and again, one of the things about energy, and I maybe I talk about it too much, but one of the things about energy is uh, there was an article out this morning by JP Morgan, and they're actually expecting a super surge coming in in uh, oil and gas. And the reason is because there's been so much underinvestment and we continue to need it. Uh, so while we still use 100 million barrels a day, because of the underinvestment, there hasn't been a lot of money going into it. So that's going to create this position where we need 100 million barrels a day and we're having decline rates of roughly 5%. So all of a sudden we're going to need some catch up there. Anyway, so that's an example of just trying to find different investing themes. Now, one of the things, um, well, let's just keep looking through the different indexes. So here's uh, the Dow 30 and, you know, Pfizer's up near the top. Johnson & Johnson is up near the top. United Health Group, here's... Um, Procter & Gamble, Walgreens, all of these Merck, uh, a lot of them are related into the, the healthcare area through different uh, types of, of positioning in healthcare. And I, I think, again, if that was going to be a new theme, as we, if we've come off a low and all of a sudden these stocks all start to outperform, that would be a new theme to try and pick up on. So as the themes change, you want to try and adapt uh, with them. And this is probably one good example. Looking at um, different types of scans that you can do to start seeing what's working, I, I wanted to put this one out here and just, uh, you know, pick a, a uh, some sort of a turning indicator. And I don't really want a one-day turn indicator. I want something that's a little bigger than that. So I ran a scan here that said for anywhere in North America, so that would be Canada or the U.S., the type is stock. And if you wanted to, you could just put country equals U.S., and then uh, I'm just looking for a weekly full stochastic to be higher than two weeks ago. So it, it was pulling down and now starts to turn back up. And then the volume, I, I'm looking for a 30-day period where the average volume is 500,000 uh, shares a day and the close is greater than $5. <clears throat> so when I run that scan, we get a whole list of names here. And... Uh, when we come back from commercial, I'm going to cover that off with you right away. So we're going to talk about Dave Landry's show right now. Thanks. And we're back. And we're going to cover off some of these scan results. So one of the things here, um, here's Innova Biomedical. This stock's obviously rocketing on some specific news today. But when we use the, the stock, in, in the scan I said I wanted to look for stocks. And so what happens is all of these ETFs, a lot of them are not, because they're ultra, um, two, two X or three X, they are put in regular stocks. They're not put in the ETFs because otherwise they'd always swing to the top or the bottom of the ETF list. So they're just out there. So um, I guess it's good news that they're in here. It's also, uh, if you're just looking for stocks, it, it wouldn't help you. But we're starting to see some names like here's Rio Tinto. And this one is starting to break out to the upside. We're trying to break out to the upside. So again, lots of volume here. And when we look at this on a weekly chart, this is the signal we were looking for, just a little bit of a, of a, a buy point on a full stochastic signal. And again, we're using a weekly signal. So what we want to see is can this start to turn up? And if you were looking for copper names or whatever, I think there's a whole theme around um, the electric vehicle. I've mentioned that a few times. If that's going to be a new theme going forward, then some of these names could could obviously start to work. And then 
Um, just looking down here, digital turbine, don't have a clue what they do, um, was a $8 stock or $9 stock has pulled back in three months to $6, so 30% um, off. Here's some of these oil names starting to try and resurrect off the bottom. And as I mentioned, um, that JP Morgan article is out today. Here's Rite Aid. Um, you know, the stock's been performing very well, scooter ranking of 98. And we can start to see this working our way higher. So again, this is just taking a simple scan, looking for something that's pulled back. So the weekly full stochastic is now starting to turn up. And you can run this either in a few days or every few days, or you could just run it once a week and, and start to see what's turning up. Obviously, we're using a weekly scan tool, so it's better if it's a Friday result because then you actually have the signal on Friday afternoon at four o'clock. But when you look through um, all of the, the full stochastics, like again, this isn't giving us a, a very big list of stocks, just giving us a basic signal like full stochastic starting to turn up. And if you want to quickly trade, then you'd use a daily. Um, that's just too frequent for me. So I like to find these, uh, again, these big smooth, either uptrends like this or um, you know, coming out of these lows, especially in commodity names, I want them coming out of the lows. And I find those easier to buy. Getting a, you know, a full stochastic signal up in here is not kind of the signal I'm looking for in commodities. So commodities, you need to buy near the low and sell near the high. They're different than, say, a tech stock where you're buying a breakout and you want to keep buying that breakout. Um, commodities typically range trade. And as you can see here, you know, you, you're much better on, on names like this to trade in and out than you are to try and um, keep, continue to buy highs in commodities. So especially while commodities have been out of favor uh, for a multiple number of years. Now, the second thing that we can do here, uh, this one is just is looking for new highs. And it's very simple, um, is all you're doing is saying today's high is higher than yesterday's daily max. And this is straight from uh, the predefined scan page. And then what you can do on the predefined scan page, it's broken out by, by exchange. You can just change it to the region is North America. So we run that scan. And when we do that, we're going to get 95 results. And now we just want to put them in a scan list. So I'm going to go down here. It doesn't matter. Just scanning Greg today. And we don't need to preserve the sort order. OK, so now what we're looking for here, again, these are stocks that are hitting new highs already. And remember, the stock market pulled back 15 or 20 percent. So for these stocks to actually be starting to break out, there's some pretty good names in here. And we want to be aware of what's, at, what's starting to break out into new highs. So with that, one of the things I like to do is just keep this ranking based on today, or if you wanted to, you could rank it over the last week. So we already know that it was a new high. Um, let's just see if it changes at all. Anyway, with that, um, some of these names down here at the bottom, um, slightly negative on the week, but we're going to take this and we're just going to number it in sorted order. So it's going to keep all of these stocks um, in the order of the biggest move up based on intraday. And now we're going to go look at them 10 per page. So this one's quite clearly got something going on. Big surge up and now a pullback here. I like it when you see the volume starting to improve. So this volume actually started to jump up in January, then pulled back. And this is a second one. And I think Nicholas Vargas uh, trading style. And then beyond air, this one's really started to take off. A uh, huge parabolic move. I'd be careful on that. And then glow point, uh, again, this one is trying to get out of this base that it's been in for a while. So this looks nice here, starting to really move. Don't know what they do. Um, Hebron technology, nice uptrend here. Nothing wrong with that. And look at this stock didn't pull back at all during the whole melee here recently. So they got something going on. So a breakout through this $8 level. Um, you know, I think you just want to watch it. And if you can start to ride that uptrend, that would be nice. The PPO is just starting to turn up. So that's a really good look. Ocular Therapeutics, they're breaking out to a new 52-week high. Um, really 
good looking chart. Here's ICAD. This one's been wonderful and it just keeps climbing up into the top right hand corner. Had a few days pullback on the uh, on Monday here, soared up. This might have been Friday. Friday soared up to a new high. And when you have these stocks that are held down there like a beach ball underwater and they get held down and then the market's pulling back, market's pulling back and the first up day after all that pullback, they pop to a new high. This is really tremendous. So I love the price action on this and it looks like it's got room to run. Here's uh, Arcturus Therapeutics. This one's breaking out to a new high on a nice big gap up. Huge volume hitting this one already today relative um, to what normally goes on. Here's Luminex and same sort of thing. Um, you know, I'm not sure I can buy it after five days straight up, but this is exactly the kind of thing as you're coming off the lows, these stocks really start to surge and, you know, we could convert these to weekly charts. The point I want to make is these are stocks that as the market pulled back, they held up. And so this was a nice flag pattern and starting to move up again. Another biosciences name. Here's Campbell's Soup. Again, I'm not sure how much you can expect from a soup company, but obviously some people are getting pretty defensive here. I guess it's everybody hoarding food for the future. And so this stock is is uh, climbing out of the base, whatever. It might continue to run for a couple of weeks or something. Um, this another therapeutics company popping to new highs. Real estate investment trust. This is a nice breakout and starting to move higher. Coaching communications. It's been in a big uptrend. It had some, you know, it swung down with the rest of the market. It looked like it did it all in one day for the most part and is continuing to go higher. So they got something going on. Uh, Vianette, wow, what a move up here. And it hardly paused with the big pullback in the market. So that one's really working nicely. JD.com, I've talked about this one when we checked the China stocks last week. And this one's broke out to new highs on uh, Monday, on Tuesday, pulled back, and on Wednesday, uh, trying to hold up again here. So, I, you know, that's the kind of thing we're looking for again. Look at the volume that came in, uh, one of the biggest volume days on the stock in six months, and it breaks out to new highs as the market's trying to fight off a pullback. This is just a, a, a Canadian company, been a very nice smooth uptrend and hardly had any pullback on that uh, market correction last week. Safety, income and growth, that's a really nice chart. Um, Interrent real estate breaking out to new highs. So, so a lot of people moving into the safety trades, uh, ZTO, um, trying to break out to new highs. Again, it's just had a nice gradual uptrend for the last year and a half. And Acom Technology, this one, wow, really big pullback. So from 52 to 42, lost 20% and immediately tried to reverse it. So some investors stepping back into that stock. But one of the things um, to keep in mind, if this was our follow through day, again, finding um, stocks really, really under pressure that were held down by the market correction, and then all of a sudden they start to pop, this new high list becomes very important this week. And again, especially if they were in a nice uptrend and then they just consolidated and are getting ready to, to launch again. So, uh, here's Regeneron, and I think, you know, this one, it's been in the news quite a bit uh, due to the uh, trying to find a, a vaccine or a therapy uh, for COVID-19. And here we are trying to get through 442 while we hovered there, and now all of a sudden it looks like we're off to the races. So this really looks uh, okay. The chart's fine. Uh, another real estate investment trust can access this one. Um, it actually had a pretty significant pullback. It was almost 20%. And is now right back at its highs already. So very fast moving. Uh, Easterly government properties. Look at that. Just uh, <laughs> gently riding up here. DEA. I don't know what that means. Um, interesting ticker symbol. And then um, Iberdrola. This one broke out correction here and trying to hold up. I don't really like that level of volatility. But it's been pretty smooth other than that. QDL, this one consolidating for two or three months and starting to hit new 52-week highs as we speak. So that's nothing wrong with that. Um, Long-term corporate bond, I think we all know that the bond ETFs have been hitting new highs. 
anyway, the idea being just trying to find some of these different tools. I want to go back to the um, stock charts homepage. Let me just go over here. Might have buried it. So on this homepage, one of the things to be aware of, again, is your ability to sort by scooter reports or actual market movers. And to do that, you hit this down tab and pick, you know, what you're looking for um, to try and see what's moving. The, the large cap, mid cap and small cap, again, if all of a sudden these are starting to surge, usually there's a pretty good reason to try and pay attention to them. Um, so here's another healthcare name, Guardian Healthcare. That theme is is prevalent today for sure and uh, just in general trying to see you know what is surging up in terms of scooter ranking these uh, you can see how much more jagged these charts are compared to the large caps and the reason for that is uh, the large caps have so much institutional ownership they keep them relatively smooth then you go into the small caps here and these ones can you know this is uh trying to make a low, trying to make a higher low bounce off the 40 week moving average. That's a pretty nice place on the chart. You can set your stop nice and close. And if it holds up, that would be nice to catch. This one looked like it was rolling over, you know, it made its highs in, I'll call it November, December. So I'm not sure I like it. The 10 week is crossing below the 40 week. I'd be cautious trying to jump on something like that. Um, anyway, some of these other charts are just pointed straight south. I'm not sure that they're um, tradable. I want something that's either already had a low getting positive momentum, maybe pulling back and starting to bounce out of the hole. That would be a little bit better. Even this Verifone down here with a higher low in the, in momentum and a lower low in price. At least I got something to work with and set your stop right here. Anyway, the, the idea behind um, these market turns is to use the tools hiding out on the stock charts homepage. And again, uh, there's so many different ways to sort this data, but I think, you know, if you're checking out under the scooter reports, if you're going to market movers under the, uh, you know, different approaches here, all of these are, <clears throat> excuse me, all of these are going to put forward good names. The other thing, um, you know, I, in particular, I'm watching a lot of the oil and gas names. I think they're close to making major bases. As an example, during the pullback, some of them didn't make new lows. No, they made higher lows. So it's, it's not necessarily that they will start to break out here, but I really do think some of the names are starting to hold up. And I noticed, you know, if you, if you follow some of the other technicians, people are starting to jump on ExxonMobil as a, a buy point. That's just too hard for me. I can't kind of get involved in, in that name. But, you know, if you go look at Diamondback Drilling, it's got the same sort of approach here. Again, I kind of want to see this downtrend in all of these, the momentum. Um, it's at least got to start turning up here. When we look at XOP, I'm starting to see, uh, you know, on a daily basis, anybody who wanted to sell is clearly out of this. So I think we're, we're at least reaching a point where we're gonna, going to have stable supply. And, and the people who are owning the stocks uh, recognize they're buying near the lows. Um, so again, let's go back to the indexes. I think one of the things I want to focus on is making sure we get out of this hole. And if you're not aware of, of how uh, precipitous or how, <laughs> how uh, close we are to having a big problem, um, I would invite you over to my um, uh, gregschnell.com as a blog over there. And you can check on that blog. There's a special coupon code in there uh, if you'd like to try out my service and just see but there's a whole bunch of ideas for you and uh, as we as the market rolls out here we want to make sure that we're on a part of it thanks for taking the time to join me on market buzz market buzz airs wednesday and friday at 10 30 a.m eastern you can also see the recording on stock charts tv youtube page thank you and have a great week good luck in trading hopefully we keep going up thanks bye-bye